Good morning, second graders. Happy Monday. Today we are going to start a whole new topic. Um, I'm going to keep my face minimized so you guys can focus on the math because there's a lot of information today. So make sure you have a pencil and some scrap paper and remember to pause whenever it's time to work. Our objective today is we can and we will sort and record data into a table using up to four categories and use the tally chart to solve word problems. So we're going to sort some data and then we're going to talk about it and solve problems. We have some new vocabulary. Our words are category, data, and table. I'm going to just briefly go over these right now because we're going to learn more about them when we see them. Familiar vocabulary, so things you might already know, are tally mark. We're going to be using tally marks today. Remember, this is a way of keeping count by drawing marks. So each of these marks is a tally mark, and every fifth mark is drawn across the last four marks, so you can easily see groups of five and count by five. So one, two, three, four, five. So I can count these by just saying five, ten, or I can count down here by looking at five, six, and counting on. So those that fifth slash always goes across. Okay, so we're going to get started. Let's play a guessing game. I have two legs, wings, feathers, and I can fly. What am I? Shout it out if you know it. It is a bird. That's right. I just described the characteristics of a bird. Today we're going to be focusing a lot on characteristics or things that tell about. Where do you see the characteristics of bird listed on our chart? Point to it on your screen or shout it out. Yeah, it's right here on the left hand side under the word bird. Feathers, wings, two legs, lays eggs, and warm blooded. Now use these sentence frames to tell me about this animal. A blank has blank and blank. Let's look at this animal. A fish has, let's go back to our chart. What does a fish have? I could say scales, fins, or gills. A fish doesn't have lay eggs, so we're going to have that later. So a fish has, I'm going to say scales and fins. Sorry, a fish has scales and fins. It can, what does it say it could do? It can lay eggs, and it is cold-blooded. I just told about all different characteristics of a fish. Another thing you could have said is it can swim. So what are the characteristics of a fish? We found those by looking at our characteristic chart. Each of these is a category, bird, mammal, reptile, and fish, and below we have characteristics for that specific type of animal. So the characteristics of a fish are that it has scales, it has fins and gills, it swims, we could also set it lays eggs, and it's cold-blooded. So we're going to sort animals into categories or groups based on their characteristics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some pictures of different animals, and you're going to be looking back at this characteristic chart to help sort them into groups. So I would like you guys to create a tree map. Remember a tree map has the title at the top and then the subcategories below. So I want you to pause here and create a tree map. Yours doesn't need everything, anything underneath it right now yet. Um, you're just going to write types of animals and then birds, mammals, reptiles, and fish. I'm going to show you some pictures and you're going to sort those into your tree map. Pause here to make your tree map. Okay, so I sorted the first two for you. I read that an orca whale has a baby orca or calf is born tail first and may weigh up to 400 pounds. So I see, I thought it was a fish at first, but when I went, it says it's born. And I went back to my chart and fish lay eggs. So that can't be a fish. So then I looked at mammal has a live birth. So I figured an orca must be a mammal. So I wrote it under mammal. For the clown anemone fish, it says the clown anemone fish has scales, fins, and gills. So from what I know about fish, I knew that was a fish and I can write that below. I'm going to go through each of the animal slides pretty quickly, but I want you to pause on each, read about them, and sort them into your tree map. Here's the first set of animals. Pause and sort, please. Here's the second set of animals. Pause and sort, please. Here's the third set of animals. Pause and sort, please. You should now have a tree map with all of your animals sorted. We're going to turn our tree map into a table. 
A table is a way to organize our information or data. So this is one of those vocabulary words. Data is just like information. When we use a tally mark, it's a tally chart, it's easier to see how many animals are in each category. So I want you guys to pause right here and make your own chart. You're going to say animal characteristics at the top, bird, mammal, reptile, and fish. And then you're going to put a tally for each animal you sorted into your treat map. Pause to complete that. Now that the data is organized in this table, it is easy to see and count how many animals belong in each category. Let's count the tally marks in each category. Bird. One, two, three, four. There are four birds. Mammals. Five, six, seven, eight. Reptiles. Five. We can see that really quickly because it has that tell, the slash across. And fish, one, two, three. Check this against your chart to see if you got the same data. Now we can use the data to answer some questions. If you noticed, I put the number below uh, next to it here so we can easily see the number and don't have to count the tallies every time. You can add that to your chart if you'd like as well. So how many categories does this table have? Remember the categories were those things at the top of your tree map. So our categories are bird, mammal, reptile, and fish. There are four categories in this data table. How many animals did we sort all together? So we're talking not about the categories anymore, but we're talking about the animals. I would like you guys to pause and solve for how many animals we sorted all together. Okay, so you should have added four for four birds, nine for nine mammals, five for reptiles, and three for fish. Four plus nine plus five plus three equals 29 animals. Oops, sorry, I meant 21 animals all together. Next question. How many more birds and mammals are there than reptiles and fish? So this one is a little tricky. I really want you to take your time here. It says how many more, so we know we're gonna have to do a subtraction problem. But it also says how many more birds and mammals are there than reptiles and fish. So before you subtract, you're gonna have to add up the birds and the mammals and the reptiles and the fish and then subtract from there. Pause to solve. So like I said, I added up the birds and the mammals, nine plus four and got 13. Then I added up the reptiles and the fish. Five plus three is eight. I then had to figure out how many more birds and mammals were there than reptiles and fish. So I did 13 minus eight and I got five. I could have said there are five more birds and mammals than reptiles and fish. So this is a two or three part problem even. The next one is similar. Let's check it out. How many fewer birds and fish are there than mammals and reptiles? So I want you guys to pause to solve this. This time we're adding up birds and fish first and mammals and reptiles first. And a how many fewer question means how a fewer is just a fancy word for less. So we're figure how many fewer mean is going to be also subtraction. How many more or how many fewer both mean that we have to subtract. So pause to solve. When I added birds and fish, I got seven. When I added mammals and reptiles, I got 14. So I did 14 minus seven to get seven. That tells me there are seven fewer birds and fish than there are mammals and reptiles. If those were confusing to you, go back and um, maybe look at my work to see if you can figure out where you made a mistake or what was confusing and see how you can solve it. Remember, if you have questions about these, you can always reach out to me. Next question. How would the table change if we counted four more birds? So pause and think about that. I think that the table would change if we added four more birds because I would put, have to put a tally mark. I would have to slash number five and then add three more. 
So under the bird section of our table, we would no longer have four, but we would have eight. So now you're done answering your word problems about the data table, I want you guys to think about what are some other ways you could have organized these animals. So we organized by the type of animal. What else could you have organized by them? Organize, sorry, organized them by. Pause to think about it. I thought of we could have sorted them by what they eat. We could have sorted them about where they live or their habitats. We could have also sorted them by whether they are predators or prey. I'm sure you guys thought of some other fun ideas too. If you want to go back and sort your animals in a new way and make another data table, you are absolutely welcome to. It's kind of a fun activity to look at all the different animals and see different ways to sort them. But that's all the work that we have for today. I'm going to show you guys today your problem set. You don't have an exit ticket today because your problem set is three pages. So the first set is pretty simple. You are uh, counting and categorizing each picture to complete the table with tally marks. So number one is asking you to use tally marks and looking at these animals to determine how many have no legs, how many have two legs, and how many have four legs. So for example, if I look at this duck, he has one, two legs, so I put a tally by the two leg part. All right, next one. Count and categorize each picture to complete the ta uh, the table with numbers. So this one we're using numbers. Remember up here we used tally marks. Um, what I would do here is first look at the table. I'm looking to see if the animals have fur or feathers. I'm counting up the animals with fur and I'm putting a number here and I'm counting up the animals with feather and I'm putting it here. So fur, fur, see how that works? I think you guys can keep going. On your next slide, you are using the animal habitats table to answering the following questions. So this is really similar to what we just did. So for example, how many animals have habitats on grasslands and wetlands? That and tells me I'm gonna to have to be adding up two groups. Read the questions really carefully to answer all of the questions. Lastly, use the animal classification table to answer the following questions about the types of animals in Miss Lee's second grade class found in the local zoo. So you're just like number three, you're reading the questions carefully and using the chart and the data given to you to answer the questions. All right, that's the whole lesson for today. Remember that if you struggle with this, if you need help or you need anything from me or Ms. Sheehan, please reach out to us. We're here to help you. Have fun with this and I can't wait to see your work.